wonder how the D line room is looking. Uh, the developments, obviously, you got a lot of guys experienced last year that are looking to emerge. Uh, just can you can it give us a snapshot of how that group is looking? Yeah, you know, there are some some guys. That's one area that some guys that have played a little bit and. Uh, you know, those guys have been working hard trying to find, you know, pairs and spares in there, you know, with some of the young folks and, um, you know, some of the new guys that came on board. So, you know, we're a handful, of pra two handfuls of practices in, and, and I think those guys are, are working hard to, A, understand what we're doing. Uh, it's not as, as simple as sometimes it, it looks. And I think, B, you know, trying to, to play hard and do all the things that we ask the standards that we play at. But i um, proud of our older guys that have been here uh, working really hard and working really hard to bring along all the pairs and spares and the competition for sure. Along those same lines, on the interior of the defensive line with no Isaiah and that position being important and really productive for you guys yeah. over the course of the last however many years, can you just talk a little bit about that position and who you're seeing there that can you know, continue on why that position. Yeah, for sure. Players. I think Dom Warren's has done a great job. J.R. Singleton, those two guys are fighting it out one and two, you know, trying to compete to be the starter. Uh, so I think great competition in there. Zamir Hawk's done a great job as well. You know, uh, Anthony Cunningham uh, and we're rolling, you know, T.O.'s got the ability to move in there as well. So there's some depth there. Great competition right now. Those two guys are fighting every day to, to get the starting reps and that's been fun to watch. And then, you know, you, you got a guy, Zamir Hawk is an interesting guy uh, for a young guy, very athletic in there. Um, maybe a little different than, than what we've had, uh, but bring some stuff and then Anth obviously is just a big body in there that can that can help us so um, and then you know spare wise you always got T.O. that you can move in there and, and he's played in there some. Why is that position so important to what you guys do? Uh, you know I, it's, it's cliche old stuff but you got to be good down the middle you know in every athletic of every sport so you, you got to be good at nose and at mic and at middle safety for us and you know when we go to our split safety stuff um, it's still you know the two inside tackles and and um, you know, the, the Mike backer and all that. So it, it becomes, it all starts in the middle. We try to push everything out, um, but it's like every other sport, point guard, pitcher, catcher, all the above and uh, that position. And they get a lot of hands on them. You know, they, they get, in, you know, sometimes four hands on them and six hands on them. Um, and by that, I'm just saying that our guy, you know, they're getting doubled by the guards and sometimes they're getting both guards. And so you, you got to be tough and you, and you have to have numbers in there too. You know, you, you can't just play with one guy with Will and then before that Jaquan, this will be the first time in like five years you don't have the career sacks leader at Iowa State on yeah. the roster. What's just the dynamic there? Um, you know, I think working through it, to be honest, I think we've got some guys. I, I think there's some young folks floating around there that are young Jaquans and young Wills, and that's exciting to me. And I think uh, trying to sort out through camp and reps and numbers and all that, um, the guy that's done a tremendous job has been Joey Peterson. Uh, you know, great pass rush, done a great job, really taking kind of a leadership role. And um, I think he's done a great job for us. Trent Jones gives us a little bit of that from the boundary, uh, a little bit like MJ did in there. And uh, so I, I think, you know, Ike and, and uh, you know, Sam Usame, I think those guys are young guys coming along. And uh, I think there's, you know, I don't think they're ready yet for sure, but I, I think there's some guys there in that group that look like those young guys did. Why is TJ Tampa what, so good? What makes him so good? You know, I, I think first, Randy, I, I think he, you know, and I think TJ would tell you this, he, he really grew up over the last year and, and I think became a, you know, tried to perfect his craft and, and really tried to embrace leadership and embrace um, being the corner and, and being a, a guy that can cover guys in, in critical situations. And, you know, I think that's part of, of maturing and saying, hey, I don't want to be just a corner. I want to be the corner. I want to be a, a real corner. And I think, you know, Hank, I think Hank's been a, a, a done a great job with him in that area. And I think just growing, um, you know, he's long, he's fat, he's got all of those different abilities. But I think the mindset has been the number one thing that's allowed him to grow. How was it for him to learn? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and I think and I think part of that too. And you know, he spoke to our team the other night. And I I think just mindset. You know, it, it's different than being on the other side of the ball. And you become reactionary. And it be, has to be something you really want to do. It's physical over there. It's you're you're out on an island over there. And um, I think he, he just grew up and and realized, man, it, it, my why is my family, and and my why is my craft. And and just chose made a uh, a choice to to go be great. And uh, really proud of who he's become.
Can you speak a little more on Joey Peterson and maybe what he brings to the team as a player, but also as a leader? Yeah, he, he's he's the uh, he, he's a Peterson. He's tough. Uh, he's physical. He's mentally tough. He's strong, uh, extremely strong. Um, and, and I think so. That's the first thing he brings. He brings an edge when he plays, and I think that's important when you play defense. I think he's adopted the leadership concept as well as being all of that. Uh, hey, you know what? There's some young guys around here. I, I've got to help them be better like somebody helped me. And uh, I think that's what he's added to it. Can you break down kind of how the depth chart looks right now at linebacker, those three spots, kind of mm -hmm. who's been battling for those? Yeah, I, I can't. Um, but that's a good thing. I, I think the competition, I think obviously Gary Vaughn, I, I, can, I can tell you who the will linebacker is going to be, uh, or at least um, is, is penciled to be, um, because of the veteran in the play. Uh, everybody else, I mean, um, you know, everybody's fighting there. Jacob Ellis is fighting in there for reps and special teams and doing a great job. Cooper Ebel, young kid who came in, um, has done a great job at the will spot. Uh, Mike linebacker, Jack Sadowski, Zach Lovett. Um, you know, we've had um, Jacob Imming in there, um, Caleb Bacon in there. Uh, there's three or four guys at, at all those positions that are really fighting for spots. At the Sam spot, it's Karsten and Carson and Will McLaughlin and um, JJ Jean Louise. And those guys, every single day, is, it, it's a battle to get reps. And uh, it's exciting as a coach to watch it because you feel like they all have the abilities. You know, sometimes you have competition and, man, not so sure. I really feel great about the abilities of these guys. Now it becomes who's going to be the most consistent every single day hey, to play Sam linebacker, to line up and fit in the right gaps and you know cover people and do the things that they're supposed to do. So a lot of competition. Uh, there's not really a depth chart other than Gary Vaughn uh, would be penciled in because uh, of who he is and what he's, what he's done here for us. You mentioned Jack uh, Sadowski, uh -huh. Coach Campbell's mentioned him a lot. Are there some similarities there maybe to what Mike Rose had coming in playing as a freshman that is going to allow him to do that? Um, yeah, I think so. I, I don't ever really compare kids. I, I don't. I don't ever look, you know, who are they like. They're themselves. So I, I don't know that I look at it that way. Uh, I look at a guy that's, that's had a great since he's been here, uh, got himself developed in the weight room, uh, has mentally caught on to what we're trying to do. Uh, which again for young people is probably seven tenths of it and uh, at least getting himself lined up and everybody else that position becomes critical because you're, you're the quarterback of the defense and sometimes when you're a young guy you don't have a lot of uh, plays mindset wise to draw from like man this hasn't happened to me a bunch before so you know we're, we've put a lot of pressure on him and all of that group in there um, and you know they've all responded so uh, I, I think he's physical he's he's learned well uh, I think all the guys at that spot are physical players. I think we're, we're blessed in there with that. You guys talk a lot about how you want people who love to play football, and it seems like Bo Freeler is a guy who's embodied that as well as anybody. How would you describe the way he plays the game and, and, you know, and, and, and studies the game to get to where he's been? Well, he's everything that you, you hope for as a coach. Um, you know, he, he's... He's the same guy on the field. He's the same guy off the field. He's the same guy in the locker room. Uh, he's the same guy if he came in here and talked to you all have interviewed him. He, he's the same person all the time. And he's driven. Uh, he's motivated. He's passionate. And yet he has great compassion for his teammates and the young guys and all of those people. And I think Bo is one of those guys also knows that it's no matter how well he plays, if everybody else doesn't play well, man, we're not as good. And he spends, you know, what I consider most valuable players. The most valuable player is the guy that makes everybody else out there better. And he's one of those guys. And, uh, you know, we're, we're fortunate to have him. And, uh, and it, you know, he, he competes at the highest level every single day, whether he's on the field or off, no matter what down it is, man. He, he's the best cheerleader. He's the best teacher. He's the best friend out there. He's all that stuff. Coach, you run a system that's kind of contingent on later in the game we'll make adjustments to what we're doing, not necessarily a, a player focused type of thing, but how do you go about, uh, I guess, crafting a defensive line this year after losing Isaiah Lee, MJ, and uh, Will, Will McDonald? Well, you, you do it the same way you did. You know, I don't, I don't think you change. Uh, you know, I think you have to understand that there's some learning, some growth 
you know, things that go on in there. Um, but I, I don't think we change how we coach or um, defenses that we call or any of those kind of things. I think you have to be respectful. I mean, obviously, you know, Will McDonald was a first round draft choice. I mean, everybody that loses at every university that loses one of those guys is it's different. Um, I think there may be some young folks floating around there that may be that guy someday. So you just continue to work and play and, and you just keep coaching them as hard as you can coach them. You find the things that they can do and where they fit in. And, um, and sometimes it's a little bit more by group and freshness and all of those things. So I don't think you, you, you approach it differently. You know, I, I think you try to just keep coaching them and you have to have some understanding. You got some new guys in there haven't played for three straight years. That's real. You know, they haven't, they haven't experienced everything that those guys have. So, um, you know, I think you just keep grinding away at it. I know we're just in camp, but how have those young guys been able to respond to that opportunity? Especially awesome. They're, they're, they're incredible. First of all, they're incredible humans. You know, we're, we're blessed. We, those, those guys are, I mean, man, you, you love those kids. They're, they're incredible human beings. And when you're that, you take coaching, you listen, you work at it really hard. Uh, when it doesn't go good, you feel bad. Uh, when it goes good, you're trying to hope you get to have another good one. And uh, so I think that's been the blessing. Those guys have been incredible. Uh, and we, we go fast. Uh, things are happening fast out there, but really proud of them at this point. Um, Coach Campbell said at Media Day something like an average of eight pounds per player of, of uh, weight and muscle gain. Uh, is that something that's stuck out to you uh, on the defensive side of the ball? I know like Gary, for example, was one yeah, of the guys that we saw at Media for Day sure. that looked bigger. Yeah. I, I think all those guys, uh, you know, and, and I shout out to, you know, nutrition and uh, it, it's been a village really to get all of those things to happen. I, I think, you know, Coach Campbell and strength staff and nutrition, I don't think it's ever, you know, good or bad if it's ever one person. I think it's always a, a village. I think our guys have done a great job, uh, our support group. Um, I think the other thing is, is our players recognized maybe that, wow, there's some areas here that we need to, to improve and individually as I look at myself and think, man, I, you know, I'm Gary, I'm going into my, I gotta, I gotta get this. I, this has to happen for me. Where do you think I should be? And I think our players have bought into it 100%. I mean, I, I've, I've, I'm not sure I've seen anything like it. And I think it starts with our players. We've got tremendous support staff that is working together, you know, to get it done. But I, I'm really proud of, proud of our players. I think from sleep and eating and, snacking and all the things that it takes hydrating i think they've you know they've bought it and, and done a great job to go back to the defensive line we talked about all the productive guys that you don't have anymore how much credit does coach rashid get for all those guys success and then how much you know solace do you take that he's going to find those next guys with the group he's got now yeah well you know i mean she she's you know he he has developed all of those guys along the way um you know, I think even you look back at Will, I mean, Will had not played a whole lot of football and not played really defensive line. And, you know, everybody wonder how's that guy doing it? Well, you know, he's got a great coach and I've got a great teacher. And, you know, we always talk about trying to be the best professors on campus. And I think she is one of those guys at that position. I, I think he does a tremendous job with those guys. I think he, um, he, he buys into their hearts and souls. And I think that's what's allowed him to develop young people faster than, than maybe some. Um, so I give him a lot of credit for that, for sure. Hey, Coach. Thanks for the time. You know, obviously a, a deep safety class coming in 2023. And then, you know, you had a lot of players that got some time from 2022 second year guys. What is maybe some of the, the depth and what's kind of stood out about some of those younger guys in a deep safety room as a whole? I, I think the same thing that I expressed a little bit about the linebacker group. I think there's tremendous competition there. You know, Nick, I, I think – Every day, you know, you see a glimpse of this or a glimpse of that or a, a, a true a freshman that got here in June or a guy that got here last January or, um, you know, we've been moving those guys around. And again, I think Dion does a good job as well. I think he, he coaches those guys. And, um, you know, I think that's the blessing I have probably as a coach is I got a room full of guys that really are great teachers and, and, and professors. And, and I think they do a great job at every position. And, I think Dion's the same. I think he's moving all of those guys around, putting a lot of pressure on them to learn different spots. Um, you know, we're, we're playing probably a little more split safety than we have, and so that's a that's a big deal. And uh, I think you know those things are all of a sudden um, 
who can learn the fastest and who can carry over one day to the next. And, and then you're, you're, you're blessed by competition. Man, didn't do, had a rough, rough period. Man, the next guy gets a chance. And that's oftentimes a great teacher as well. What are your thoughts on how Will McDonald has transitioned and how he's doing this? In yeah, I, uh, I'm not surprised at anything. The only thing I guess I'm probably surprised of is that nobody's taken his skateboard away from him yet. Um, that would be the first thing that I would say. Um, but I'm not shocked at all. I think Will is, Will is everything that he was here they're going to see at the next level. You're, you're going to see a kid that loves football that, the, the, man, the minute I cross the white line, I'm going to compete. And it's really what I told all the scouts and you know, GM people that came to ask me what, was, what I thought. Um, tremendous competitor, tremendous athlete, great team player. And uh, he loves football. And uh, he'll love that locker room, too. And I think that's the real plus about him. He, he's an awesome guy. And uh, I'm proud of him. And he's just getting started. Just getting started. I'm sorry? Did you ever try to take away the skateboard? Oh, I think this building, he was, I think the skateboard might have disappeared. 